are back, Mark, with a, a new season and ten more questions of fans and you with the obligatory cup of tea that we want you to drink by the time we finish. <laughs> I'll drink it now because I'm <laughs> gasping for it, actually. But. Anyway, here we go. Multiple fans. Yeah. Been some rumours coming out across social media this yeah. week. Have there been any approaches for Connor Chaplin? Um, I won't deal with Connor in isolation because I don't think it's fair really to deal with any, any player in, in that manner. But... Um, Listen, I speak to chief execs from other clubs, managers from other clubs, um, chairman from other clubs, pretty much on a daily basis. Um, and, and they're always saying, as this player doing, as that player doing, you know, would there be any interest in doing X, Y and Z? But when it comes specifically, you know, and to, to Connor, and you ask me a direct question, has there been any really firm inquiries? No, there hasn't been. And you know, we're going to stop all these little... Tip bits going out on social media somewhere, you know, and, and you can't, can you? You can't stop it. You, you can't, and then actually by speaking to the news, which we always try and do, and we try and be open and honest and speaking about it now, you actually fuel the fire, and that's not really what we want because it becomes a bigger issue. You know, it gains a bit of publicity, and then before you know where you are, a story that wasn't a story can become a story because it alerts people to the fact that, you know, that, that, that people are talking about a particular player. So the less said about it for everyone, really, the better. Nevertheless, as we get towards August the 31st, it's going to go a bit crazy everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it will. And as a, as a club, we have to be firm. Um, as I said in the news this week, you know, you can never say never in regards of ins and outs on, on any player. Um, but I think Paul's relatively settled in, in what he's got. Um, I would, again, never say never again in regards of potential players going in and out because you just never know what might materialise from there until Wednesday. Um, however, I think Paul as a, as a whole from my discussions with him is is, is really happy with what he's got. Um, happy that this will get us through to January initially, this, this set of players. Um, but as I say, you just never know what's around the corner. More multiple fans. Is there a way to improve the service at the bars at half-time? Service has been slow so far in the first games. Could pints not be ready poured before the interval, for example? My understanding is that pints are ready poured. If not, it's something that I'll raise with centre plate. Um, in regards, we had a Tony Goodall fans conference on Saturday morning and we discussed what, what was happening with the kiosk this year. And I know that they are looking at introducing some fast pour sites throughout the stadium, specifically, I think, in the North Stand Lower where uh, you can actually just go there and, and it'll be the quick pour pints where it comes up from the bottom. So I'm, I know that they're hoping to have that in place maybe for Crawley, our next home game. So that'll be fantastic. If not, it'll, it'll definitely be during the month of September that, that, that we get this in. And, and I think that'll alleviate a lot of the, the pressure at the kiosk, specifically in the North Stand. Yeah, yeah. You're always going to get slight pressure on kiosks, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of them things that... When, when I mean, we, we know, and we, we do say this, that we had an audit done of the stadium when we first come out of administration. And in regards of the kiosks and what the, the capabilities are, I think from memory, it's, um, it can really, in modern day stadia, <coughs> our kiosk facilities can only cope with ten to 12,000 people and we're getting a lot more than that. So we're always going to be at breaking point. But centre plate do what they can, I believe, to try and alleviate that by pre-pouring. But again, you can only pre-pour so many because the beers go flat and they go a little bit warm and, and, and such like, especially in this weather. So you've got to be very, very careful with pre-pouring. Um, but as, as a, what I've just said is that, and it's true, that they're, they're trying to introduce these fast pour kiosks where they just sell in draft beer um, you can't, won't be able to get anything else and it's hoping that that will alleviate a lot of the pressure at the kiosks. OK, Russ on Instagram. Why don't they accept card payments in the ground? Queued up for a long time to get a beer at the Carlisle game, only to be told we don't accept cards. Yeah, I think, that, again, that's, that's down to the queues. If, if you start introducing you know, card payments at kiosks and, and as an example, it, it has to go through for an authorisation and that happens and, and there's a any sort of problems or delay, it's just going to make the queues even, it's just going to compound mm. an already existing problem. So it's not something I don't think they're looking at do, uh, doing in the near future, although I will raise that with centre plate. And there's also, there's, there's always a, 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 a sort of quirk when, you, when you're standing at a bar and somebody's paying for a pint of lager with a credit card. Yeah, I mean, that, that, and it becomes frustrating, you know, for, for people behind going up. Yeah, well, you're usually behind. <laughs> yeah, so you've experienced it yourself that, you know, we know in this day and age everyone wants to play by card, but unfortunately 
in, in regards to the kiosk, when you, you've got a, a 15 minute spell at half time to serve X thousands of people, you just want people to quickly keep being pushed through. And what you can't have is people stood there waiting and there's an issue with the card machine or it's checking for authorization and the lines are busy, which tends to happen on match days generally because of the, the pure volume of people going at the half time, you know, using the network. So I think that would be a really difficult one for centre plate to in, uh, act in for us. Right, Mark on Facebook. This is our fourth season in the bottom division. If we don't go up this season, should we not look at possible fresh investment? Um, personally, I think no. Um, obviously, that's an issue for the board, but we've managed to now, over the course of the four years, gradually increase the budget year on year on the work that we're doing. It's a highly competitive budget in League Two, um, if not one of the best you know so um, no I don't think at this point that would be a, a reason for attracting new investment. Investment helps but it's not always in the panacea it's it's supposed to be. No as you said it helps but there's far more important issues in and around Fratton Park and the training ground you know that you would require investment for but to Listen, there is an argument if you wanted to attract investment and actually blow the league away, fair enough, but then that money's gone. Then you go up a level and then how are you going to compete there? You need more money and then you're in that vicious cycle. You know, I think the, the view of the board currently is while we're producing a, a very, very competitive budget at this level and the same again in League One, hopefully in the future, should we arrive there, we'll be able to do the same. But any investment would be for infrastructure projects, not necessarily just going straight out on the pitch. Carl on Twitter, kids for a quid, is it coming back this season? Yep, we are already um, discussing the first game that we're going to be doing it. So we're working with Claire in the community, our commercial team, our ticketing office. But yes, we, that, the simple answer to that is yes, kid for a quid will be coming back at certain fixtures this season. Ernie on Facebook, the wall of names at the training ground looks very impressive. Is there a time scale for the wall of shareholders' names at Fratton Park? And where will that be? Um... That's actually not a club issue, it's a, it's a PST, um, not even an issue, it's, it's a PST action point that they're, they're, they're in the process of completing. They're, I believe I'm not talking out of turn, that it's going to be based in the North Stand, the back of the North Stand. Um, there's been some issues there in regards of, typical with Fratton Park, the, the gut rings leaking and that, and because it's, it's so old and decrepit, it, as it leaks, it leaves stains down the walls. So what they don't want to do is is build the wall of fame there as such and um, and then have the guttering leak and leaving stains down it. So we've had to address that issue. The guttering's all been fixed. I believe there's a K render. It's a new type of rendering that's going to be going up that um, is very durable and hard wearing. All the plates, if not completed, are already in production. So I would hope personally from the timescales that I've been given, you're looking at the next month or two, that work will be completed on that mike on facebook when will the new sound system be finished a lot of people ask that um works already commenced as i said on the new sound system i think they're doing a lot of areas in and around the outside of the stadium to um, comply with our a safety certificate requirements but internally i believe over the next week or two so by the time we get to the end of september you should Everyone inside the stadium should be noticing a difference with the new PA system. It has been problematic over the years, hasn't it? It, it, it? It's been a bit of a problem and you get complaints from the south stand saying it's too loud. Then you get complaints from the north stand saying it's, it's, you can't hear it at all. So it's been problematic getting that balance with the old system. Getting that balance with the old system, yeah. Is that a joke? <laughs> no, it wasn't actually. It was said quite, quite, quite off the cuff. And that is the problem, getting the balance right. Um, no, it's it's like many other areas of Fratton Park, it's severely lacked investment. You know, this is a really expensive day out getting a new PA system. People wouldn't believe the prices involved. It's, it's huge to cater for a stadium of this size. But again, it's the years of lack of investment that's gone on. And now, due to, to the fans' ownership and the way the club's being run, we are putting that investment in. Um, and as I said, by the end of September, hopefully, you know, people should be no really noticing a difference. I guess people wouldn't understand the, the cost of, of renovating all the, the bits and pieces you have done in the ground. No, I think it's important to realise that I think we are now in excess of a million pound plus that's been spent on Fratton Park since since the community ownership model kicked in, you know, and that's without all the work that's gone on at the, 
the um, training ground as well, which is another million pound plus project. And anything you do at a stadium is isn't cheap. It's not like a house, you know. If you if you if you put a new sound system in your house, you might you know it might cost you a thousand pounds to get a good one. You know, you can multiply that by two three hundred times when you're talking about a stadium. So that gives you a, a level of how much it costs. Multiple fans. With the deal with Sondico nearing an end, will we be exploring the possibility of finally leaving them? Um, we've got, as you probably know, we've got this season and next. Um, the votes for the new kits for next season are shortly due to take place. Um, the answer to the question is, of it, there's about an 18-month lead time, 18 months to 12-month lead time to when you choose a kit supplier to when they're actually got their kits on the shelf. You know, if you want to do it properly, that's the amount of time you need. So to logically, time dictates that, yes, we, if we want to explore looking at a new kit supplier and, and retail supplier as well, tied in with one, then now's the time that we would be beginning the early stages of that. Um, and, and that's what we're currently doing. Okay. Vern on Instagram. There were a lot of problems last season with the Pompey player radio coverage as one match already this season. Service very inconsistent, failing to get on air, audio volume. How can we look at improving that service? I think we've had one issue um, so far this season. I believe it was the Carlisle game where the um, the volume was very low um, and got resolved after 40 minutes, which, you know, that's still not acceptable, but... And I'm not passing the buck here. On to, as you know, we partner with Express FM. Yeah. Um, it's their responsibility to, to actually ensure that there is a, it's of a sufficient quality that goes out to our listeners. I understand even there it was a transmitter problem. It was something slightly out of their control. It was, ad it was addressed. Um, we'll be monitoring it. It isn't acceptable. And hopefully this year we'll have a far better service. Okay. Last but not least, Miles Sampson on Twitter. Are we done in the transfer market or are we still looking? I think um, we're always looking. You know, even when you're done, you're still looking. You're always looking to improve on, on what you've got. Um, Paul's no different to any other manager and we're no different to any other club in, in that respect. So we might say from now to Wednesday, we're done. But come Wednesday morning, as an example, if a player becomes available that Paul thinks will improve us, um, I'll have no hesitation going back to the board and saying, look, this player's become available. Um, are you willing to go that little bit extra to, to bring him in and, and then it'll be a decision for the ball but to answer the question yes we are always looking um, and it wouldn't surprise me to, to see it an in or an out maybe before the end of the transfer window um, it's not something we're actively looking for as in we, we're going out looking for particular positions I mean none that Paul has raised to me but as I say if something did become available and there was a chance of getting one in one out or whatever out or the board you know fund a little bit extra in the budget then I'm sure that that will be met sympathetically. Does it ideally have to be one out to get one in? Um, well we're more or less there or thereabouts on budget at the moment. Um, now budgets are just budgets you know they're, they're not cast in stone and you know as we continue to do well you know in terms of the support that we receive and that you know we, we will look to get as much as, as we can of that on the pitch that's what the board have always promised and that's what we've always delivered um, but as, as, as it stands at this minute with the current existing player budget we're more or less there but as I say that you know Paul's always looking to work within that budget and he'll only ever come to the board in an exceptional circumstance mm. so um, so the, the lead up to Wednesday will be no different in that now your thoughts early days but your thoughts on things so far uh, it's probably a little bit like the fans been a, a degree of uh, I'd say the words frustration you know I thought we absolutely dominated against, against Carlisle um thought crew was a pretty even game i thought Morecambe second half we absolutely dismantled them um and then we come back here and and rode our luck a little bit maybe against um go on my brain's going who was it on saturday oh, against, <laughs> colchester. against colchester on saturday it's all that tea yes yeah, all that tea against colchester um but you know there's been plenty of other times we haven't been lucky you know we deserve to win and we haven't probably saturday you know it was I still thought in the balance of play we deserved to win, but you know, it was a, a rash challenge by them and that, that, that got the breakthrough. But 
well, this is so early in the season, I think, to even be really discussing. It, it's just the start of the season. It's what you'd expect. It doesn't settle down until you're 10 to 15 games in. And, and then ask me the question in 10 to 15 games, really. But as I say, it's just, just been a little bit frustrating, it, as, as I'm sure the fans feel the same. But I think the new players are settling in well. I think, um, you know, they've done great. I think we look a lot strength, stronger this year. I think we've got stronger depth in the squad and that will be important when the uh, window shuts because no one will be able to do anything then until January. But even this early, there's, you've already got signs of teams that are going to come here, be belligerent, get men behind the ball and, and that's something to break down. Yeah, we had that last year. You know, you know, Paul, as I'm sure he will, Paul's a very, very intelligent manager. You know, he's, he's a great manager um, and, you know, he's... he's He's not a silly person. He'll work that out that, you know, this this is going to happen and he'll look for ways to adapt and change and, and make sure that teams that do sit here and... What are you looking at? Well, carry on. Yeah, still got enough tea in there. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Paul will look at ways and he is currently looking at ways, you know, that he can adapt the squad to get the best out of them, especially at home. Oh!